Hi Spartans, today I want to walk you through some of our best UNCG traditions. Now many alumni remember some of the first traditions at UNCG that are sadly now departed, such as the class jacket. Many rites of passage were associated with the move from one class year to the next. During the years of the women's college, freshmen were rats, and on rat day performed a day of service for their big sister, a member of the junior class. Following rat day, freshmen were officially members of the community. Sophomores were entitled to order class jackets in the class color, juniors were entitled to order the class ring, and of course, seniors were graduating. Of our modern day traditions that still stand, we're gonna have our first stop at Minerva. She's the Roman goddess of wisdom and the face of our class seal. She also appears on our class rings. Many think of her like an academic mascot. One of the traditions associated with her is the apple. People say that if you give an apple to Minerva as an offering, you'll have good luck on test day. During finals weeks, you'll see hundreds of apples surrounding the statue. With the co-education implemented in 1963, many older traditions were lost, such as tea parties for classes, daisy chains at graduation, and sister classes. But new traditions, as you can see from this tour, have taken over. Our second stop is College Avenue. Right here on College Ave is where the annual fall kickoff is held. Hundreds of different offices and student groups set up informational tables on the first day of school. These groups give out lots of free stuff, so make sure you come out and see all that UNCG has to offer. On College Ave, we see the Faust Building. The Faust Building is the oldest building on campus. It is named in honor of Julius Isaac Faust, president of the college from 1906 to 1934. This building houses study abroad, international programs, and global engagement. Also in the 70s, student groups began lighting up our campus with a luminary display for the holidays each December. The traditions were carried over to the other holiday traditions like the lighting of the Vac Bell Tower, which was built in 2005. The bell tower rings out with seasonal songs. Our third stop is the clock tower and the rock. Popular UNCG legend states that students who walk underneath this clock won't graduate on time. Most students don't take any chances. Don't worry though, we're always watching out for you to make sure you don't accidentally walk under. The Rock was brought to campus in 1973 by Alpha Phi Omega to begin like a message board for campus. The unwritten rule is that you must leave any message up for 24 hours before painting over it. Use the smaller rocks to provide a time and date for each message. You may see athletic events, birthday wishes, or even marriage proposals painted on the rock. Our fourth and final stop is the fountain at Moran Plaza. The fountain is a popular hangout for UNCG students and a place where many fun events are held. Here you can also see the campus come aglow with the annual UNCG tradition of the luminaries at the dusk of every December reading day. Moran Commons is the newly renovated building with multiple food options inside it. On the bottom floor you can find Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and Wing Street, as well as the Spartan Market. The top floor is the Found View Dining Hall, where I'm sure many of you will enjoy a lot of meals. Some other key parts of UNCG history include how finally, in 1954, schools were integrated by the Supreme Court. Two years later, in 1956, the Women's College admitted the first two African-American students, Betty Davis Tillman and Joanne Smart. The Smart Tillman Parlor and Shaw Hall of the Quad is named in honor of their accomplishments at the university. Sadly, Betty Davis Tillman is deceased. However, Joanne Smart Drain served on the UNCG Board of Trustees for two terms from 1996 to 2003 and is still involved with the university. In 1963, the UNC system was expanded from the original three schools, NC State, UNC, and us. Additionally, men were allowed to enroll at our university starting in 1963, so the women's college became known as UNCG. Although many of the women's college era opposed the change and actively fought the legislative process that led to coeducation, men finally arrived for the first year of attendance in 1964. We hope you come to learn and experience all these traditions at UNCG within your first year as a Spartan. More than that, we hope that during your time here at UNCG, you're able to create some traditions of your own. Oh.